The Liebherr LR1600-2 is a very big cooler crane and it's fitting that the model therefore comes in a very big box. Inside the Liebherr branded box there are three factory sealed trays and each one contains numerous parts which go towards building up the whole model. Also included is a decent set of assembly instructions and that includes a full parts list. And there are also numerous photos to help with building the model. The instructions are very good but not perfect because they don't show where every single part goes. One thing worth remarking on though is the standard of the packaging which is very high. And in terms of wrapping this is one of the best models you'll find. We've covered the full assembly of this model in a previous video. But we'll take another look here at the reeving of the A-frame which is probably the trickiest part of the job. To begin with you need to take all of the thread off of the twin drums. And in fact it would have been better if NZG hadn't put it on there in the first place. Here it's being equally wound onto a spindle just to keep it under control. And when you've got it all off you need to cut off the ends to release it from the drums. The latest set of instructions show what's needed clearly enough for you lay down the A-frame. And then start reeving in sequence from one end. And it's for this reason that you would need to remove that long continuous piece of thread from the twin drums. When the reeving is finished it's preferable to try and end up with the same amount of thread on each drum. And here's an alternative way of achieving it. Firstly the A-frame is temporarily supported. And then the middle of the thread is placed over the middle pulley. And that piece of tape is indicating the middle of the thread when it was spooled off. Now we're using another piece of tape just to stop the middle of the thread moving away from the middle pulley. Now we start the reeving process again and we're going to do it in two halves, working out from the middle. And when we've done one half we're left with a free end of thread to tie on to one of the winch drums. The process is then repeated for the other half. Now whichever way you go about it, the reeving process is both tiresome and intricate. And it can make you say words you didn't even realise you knew. Anyway, once it's done you should then be left with two equal lengths of thread. And then they are tied onto the winch drums and wound in. There, not too difficult, it only took about two minutes. Apart from reeving, the other main assembly process is fixing things together with tiny nuts and bolts. And this works very well and special tools are provided to help. The connections are strong and the only thing to avoid is over tightening the nuts and bolts. The metal track pads are thin and finely detailed. This model is a limited edition in the colours of the German company Nieb Schuch, and the graphics on the track frames are really sharp. The cab looks very good with metal handrails and a nice detailed interior, and on the side of the body there are more excellent graphics and only the big silver screws slightly detract from the look. The counterweight blocks are nicely formed and metal pulleys are used throughout the model. Looking down on top there are textured surfaces and the winch drums look very convincing. The metal boom sections are very well made with accurate lattice work. And there is hand railing and mesh walkways too. The boom heads are modelled very well and two hook blocks are provided. The larger one is modular and is shown here split in half. And the smaller one is a single pulley block. The ballast trailer is also solidly modelled in metal. And the rubber tyres are also good quality. We'll start the features review by looking at the crawler tracks. And although they won't grip on a smooth surface, they do roll well and are nicely engineered. With the full weight of the crane on them, it's possible to track them realistically. Another feature that works well is the rotation of the crane. And bearing in mind that the loads on this model are quite high, it is a good achievement to get the model turning smoothly. You operate the winches by using a special key which fits into discrete holes in the bodywork. And you could power it with an electric screwdriver if you wanted. 
So if you're keen it is possible to play crane driver. Or maybe you'd prefer to drive something else, how about the ballast carrier? This rolls along nice and smoothly and it's got a very good feature in terms of the articulation of the wheel sets. The wheel sets also have steering so for example you can set the wheels at an angle and then when it's connected to the crane the carrier will rotate as the crane rotates. But it's not all about big features on this model, there are plenty of small ones as well, such as the folding ladder on the ballast carrier. The real strength of this model is that it can be built up in so many ways, such as here with a 30 meter boom. Or you can go the whole way and have a full luffing jib arrangement. Or we can build the model in a wind turbine configuration. And it's similar to the real crane, but not as tall. Anyway, our model crane is going to be used for wind turbine construction, so let's give it something to lift. So we've put a couple of big straps on, so let's add a big wind turbine nacelle. This is quite a heavy lift, so we'll also make sure that the ballast carrier is connected to the derrick mast. So here is the model built in a wind turbine configuration using all of the available parts in the box. And it certainly makes for a very big and impressive model. Not only that, it's able to handle our wind turbine load quite comfortably. So that gives us some confidence and we'll explore that a bit more soon. With the model fully built up, let's get the tape measure out. And in this configuration to the very top is about 69 inches or 175 centimeters. This is a Cranes Etc safety advisory. When on site, always wear a hard hat. It's time for the genuine imitation real life test. And we'll check the lifting ability of the crane. It's got a 30 meter boom and the effective radius is 36 centimeters. So let's have a Cranes Etc tutorial. And the first thing we need to do is to convert our 36 centimeters into the equivalent real radius. 36 centimeters is 0.36 of a meter. And to convert it to a real life radius, we multiply it by 50. And the answer that we get is uh, quick as a flash, 18 meters. So that's our real life radius, let's go to the lifting charts. And for this configuration the real life capacity is 152 tonnes. To scale down the tonnage we need to do a different calculation. Weight is related to volume, so if we have a cube then the volume of it is L times L times L. And I hear you asking what the L do you do with that? Well to approximate the scale weight you take the real weight and multiply it by 150th times 150th times 150th. In this case we know our real weight, it's 152 tonnes, and it turns out that's 152,000 kilograms. So to scale it down we multiply it out by our 150ths, and we get 1.22 kilograms. So that's the theory, let's go back to our test area. And here using the counterweight blocks that come with the model we've set up a load of 1.22 kilograms. So now let's load this up onto the crane and we'll see if it can lift it. So far it's got most of the load on and the crane's not tipping. So let's add the last of our scaled weight and see what happens. And it's success because the crane can lift its capacity of 152 tonnes. Okay then tough guy, let's put a bit more weight on and see what happens. And it seems to be managing with just a few more weights. Let's try another one. And yeah, yes, it's still able to hold it, but it does look like it's on the point of tipping. So let's just put one more on. And yes, with that on, it's too much and the crane starts to tip. So now let's weigh the load just before the last of the weights was added. And if we roughly allow for the weight of the hook, it's 1.5 kilograms, which scales to 185 tons. So the overload factor on tipping is 20%, which is less than you'd want on a real crane. This model in the colours of Nieb Shuk is a limited edition with only 300 made, and it looks really good in this particular colour scheme. The model itself is really well detailed and very well made and presented. All of the features work well and it can be configured in many different ways. If you want a really good crawler crane model, this one is outstanding. 